Hello and welcome to this video on multiplying and dividing negative numbers. Now suppose we were to start with 3 times 2, we know that's equal to 6. Now what happens if we reduce that number by 1? So if we have 3 times 1, well we obviously now have 3. And can you see that if I'm reducing that number multiplying by 1, I have 1 less 3. So I have 3 less each time. So if I do 3 times 0, multiplying by 1 less 3 again, I'm going to have 3 less and I'm obviously going to have 0. Anything times 0 is 0. But what if I keep on going further? Well, if I reduce this by 1 again, 0 drops down to negative 1. And by following this pattern, we can see if we subtract 3, we get to minus 3. Let's go one more. 3 times negative 2, that's dropped by 1. So that goes down by 3, we have 1 less 3, and we have minus 6. So you can see that if you had 3 times 2, it would be 6. And 3 times negative 2 is minus 6. So it seems that when we have a positive number times a negative number, that gives you a negative number. And similarly, we could show that if we have a negative number times a positive number, we have a negative number. So if one of the two numbers is negative, we end up with a negative number. Now suppose now that we had negative 2 multiplied by 3. Well, we know that is minus 6 from here. But what happens if we reduce this number by 1 each time? So minus 2 times 2. Well, we know negative times positive is negative, and 2 times 2 is 4, so it'll be negative 4. Let's keep on going down. So reducing that by 1. And we can see that this is increasing by 2 each time. We know that's minus 2. We can see that's increasing by 2. What about minus 2 times 0? Well, anything times 0 is 0. And we can see, look, that's increasing by 2 again. So we can continue the pattern. We'd next have minus 2 times that drops down to minus 1. And if that's going up by 2, then we must have 2. And then go one further, minus 2 times minus 2, that would be 4 because that's gone up by 2 again. So we can see this time, when we have negative times negative, it actually gave you a positive number. If you have minus 2 times minus 2, you just do the 2 times 2, which is 4, and it's going to be positive, because negative times negative is positive. So we have negative times negative is positive. The way I remember it is that if the signs are different, then you end up with negative. If the signs are the same, so they're both negative or they're both positive, then you end up with positive. Clearly, positive times positive would also be positive. So let's do some of these examples. We've got, firstly, 4 times minus 3. You don't actually need to include those brackets there. It's just so you don't mix up negation with subtraction. When you have that minus there, that means minus 3. It doesn't mean a subtraction of 3. And sometimes we put the brackets around the negative number to show that that's negation rather than a subtraction. So first we do 4 times 3, which is 12. But then we think, well, positive times negative is negative, so it's going to be minus 12 instead. What about the second one? we got minus 2 times 5. we got negative times positive, which is negative, And 2 times 5 is just 10. So it's minus 10. What about the next one? We've got minus 6 times minus 5. Well, negative times negative is positive, and 6 times 5 is 30, so it's 30. What about the fourth one? We have minus 7 squared. Now, squared just means that you times the number by itself. So it's minus 7 times by minus 7. And negative times negative is positive, and 7 times 7 is 49, so it's 49. And in general, whenever you square a number, it will always be positive. What about 5? We've got minus 8 times 5 minus 9. And by the way, when you have two things next to each other, it means you times them. So it's minus 8 times by 5 minus 9. So we've got minus 8 times by. Well, what's 5 minus 9? Well, it's minus 4. And then negative times negative is positive, so it'll be positive. 8 times 4 is 32. Positive 32. What about the next one? We've got minus 1 to the power of 100. Now, we know if we times 1 by itself, it just gives 1 every time. So really, we just care about, is it going to be a positive or a negative number? Well, if you think about it, if you had minus 1 squared, we know that's minus 1 times minus 1. Negative times negative is positive, so it would be positive 1. If we did minus 1 cubed, it's going to be minus 1 times minus 1 times minus 1. 
Well, negative times negative is positive, but positive times negative is negative again, so it'll be minus one. So basically what's happening, if you do a negative number to an even power, then the minuses sort of cancel out in pairs and you'd end up with a positive number. But if you have a negative number to an odd power, then you end up with a negative. So it must be, because this is an even number, we end up with positive one. And then we finally got division. And division just works in exactly the same way as multiplication of negative numbers. So we've got 10 divided by minus 5. Well, positive divided by negative is going to be negative, just like multiplication. So it's negative, and 10 divided by 5 is 2. What about 8? We've got minus 28 divided by 4. Negative divided by positive is negative, and 28 divided by 4 is 7, so it's minus 7. 9, we've got minus 6 divided by minus 1. Negative divided by negative is positive, so it's positive 6, because 6 divided by 1 is 6. And finally, 10, we got 64 divided by, well, minus 2 squared. Do you remember I said a squared number is always positive, and 2 squared is 4, so it's just divided by 4, and we're going to get 16.